So this is an absolutely fascinating story. And it's going to show the sort of fight that goes on between the White House and the Senate Democrats. Because as you guys know, with the victory of John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock, it puts it at a 50-50 tie. Now, who breaks the Senate ties? The vice president does. Who's the vice president? It's uh, Kamala Harris. So she breaks all ties, right? They have a Senate power sharing agreement. Now, if there's a, a bill that's tied up in the committee and a tie vote, it still comes out for a vote regardless if it's a tie or not. So what, what really it is is 48 uh, Democrats, okay? It's really more 48-52 type of situation. And the reason for that is because there's two major dinos in the Senate, dinos being Democrats in name only, and that, well, it's a Democrat, so technically, you know, it's a Democrat, but you get the point. So there's Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema, right? Kirsten Cinema, I think, said that her hero or person that she wanted to model herself off of um, is Joe Manchin. I believe she's from Arizona. Um, Joe Manchin is the sort of the most prominent uh, centrist Democrat, essentially, there is, and so he's going to be the person who's standing in the way of $15 minimum wage, uh, the COVID relief bills that are planned, any sort of health care reform, things of that nature. He's going to be standing between it, and he's even standing between a lot of the White House's ideals. This is going to remind you a lot of the Obama administration where they got into a lot of fights in the Senate. A lot of things got held up in the Senate, so it looks like a bit of a repeat right now. So the 50 votes might have not really even been much of a win except for the fact of preventing Mitch McConnell, which is definitely a lot, obviously. But what's going on here is interesting. Uh, so it says, Manchin couldn't believe seeing Harris's West Virginia TV interview. So what's going on is, um, it appears that Kamala Harris, Vice President of the United States, went to West Virginia to give an interview to put pressure on Joe Manchin. So it says, West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin, a key swing vote in the Senate, expressed frustration on Friday about an interview Vice President Harris gave to a TV station in the state and said that the White House had not notified him beforehand. Speaking with NBC affiliate WSAZ, the centrist Democrat said that the Vice President's interview was, quote, not a way of working together and called on the White House to help find a, quote, bipartisan pathway forward. I saw the interview. I couldn't believe it. No one called me about it, Manchin said. We're going to try to find a bipartisan pathway forward, but we need to work together. That's not a way of working together. It says Harris had given the interview to push for the White House coronavirus relief proposal. Quote, to your point in West Virginia, one in seven families is describing their household as being hungry. One in six can't pay their rent, and one in four small businesses are closing permanently or have already closed, so it's a big issue in West Virginia and across the country, Harris told WSAZ. Um, and that's why the president and I are offering the American Rescue Plan. His request for further comment from Manchin's office was not immediately returned. The White House also did not immediately return an email regarding the senator's comments. So basically what's going on here, you can see Manchin is blindsided by this interview, what Harris is trying to do is, she's trying to put pressure on Joe Manchin by going straight to the constituents and basically getting the constituents on the side with the American Rescue Plan of the White House, which then in turn, um, those constituents would pressure Joe Manchin into supporting the American Rescue Plan and the COVID relief and things of that nature that are supported by the White House. So they're also trying to put pressure. They're really starting to throw, those are some... That, this is a big deal, guys. Manchin is really a huge swing vote. Really, Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema are incredibly powerful right now um, because they're the one Democrats who really disagree with the law, um, getting a lot of this stuff through right now, and they can essentially hold it up, right? They're swing votes. It's a 50-50 tie. So if they vote no, well, that's it. It's dead, right? So they're very, very powerful right now. And so the White House seems to be trying to figure out, okay, how do we put pressure on Joe Manchin to pass these things that we want to pass, right? And so they're taking the interesting route. This is definitely a sort of, it's sort of a, you know, I don't know, it's a tough route you're taking here. You're really throwing some blows here, right? You're not going to him behind closed doors and stuff. You're, you're going, going to West Virginia to do an interview with TV with West Virginia TV. And you're doing an interview to put pressure on Joe Manchin directly from his constituents. That is a pretty ballsy move. I have to say, it's a pretty ballsy move. Is it going to work? I don't really know. Is convincing Joe Manchin behind closed doors going to work? Probably not. So this is probably a sort of, hey, we have no other option situation. But 
it'd be crazy if this went bad and then Joe Manchin is 100% against anything that the Democrats want. Uh, but this is playing hardball with Joe Manchin, essentially, which is surprising because it's not something you really see from Democrats. But as you guys know, Kamala Harris, um, she's pretty cerebral. Uh, she didn't do well in the election, but she is kind of cerebral. She is kind of a, a sort of a crazy thinker like that and stuff like that. A ruthless person, you know, ruthless and throughout her whole life. So she's a very ruthless person. So it's not even slight, it, you know. For her, as a person, this isn't really a surprising thing because it sort of fits her life mantra and the way she's gone about everything, which is being just absolutely ruthless. She is just ruthless in her um, quest for power, essentially. So she's continuing that here. But it is interesting to see because this is really the first fight that you can see directly between the White House and Joe Manchin. So how is this exactly going to turn out? I don't really know. But as we got all know, Joe Manchin is a massive piece of shit. Um, I don't know how it's going to turn out. But this is the beginning of a fight. Maybe even a war.